We haven't had a Monday session in quite some time, so really good, no matter the turnout, really happy for the turnout. So as you guys can see, many of you would have quickly start to realize that hmm, maybe I would have been better off trading Euro USD for the 2021 trading year. It's been selling from May, uh, before me actually, it's been selling from December 2020 all the way. So it has completed its one year run. The moment we saw that the dollar index, um, which we oftentimes use as a confluence, the best confluence so far to measure dollar strength, the moment we saw it make a bullish move on the chart, it became more and more apparent that you know the euro, which euro USD, which is an inverted DXY, but many of you are not privy to that would in fact continue to go down. So as long as this keeps pushing up, expect this to keep falling. Now, quite naturally, even with the DXY, there's going to be periods of exhaustion that steps in on the asset. So for those who are understanding what I'm saying, you must realize that there's going to be a buy-off eventually, right? But not a buy-off in the sense like it's going to buy off forever and ever. Uh -uh. The current historical context of the asset and in terms of order flow, let me show you the history first. So this is the history, first and foremost, to give you guys a solid reminder of what you're inside of. This is the current history of it. We're bearish from 2008, actually. And look like we're going to continue. So for the 2022 trading period, for January, everybody should be gearing up to see a decent sell-off. All right? Uh, so now... Price on the weekly chart has gone into a decent liquidity area. So I'm looking for some buying, especially given that um, Wednesday, which is the current session on right now for Tokyo, is midweek reversal. So I'm looking for a little buying to take place. But remember, everyone, should the market price of this asset then proceed to take out the low that it made for today? which is Tuesday for us, Jamaica time at, yeah, earlier during the US session. If this low at 1.13088 is taken out, that represents a continuation of a sell-off. We did in fact make mention of the price that we're looking for Euro USD to go to. We're looking for the Euro USD to drop to 1.11. That is approximately, just to give you guys a heads up, uh, how many pips are we? Come on. What on earth is up with this cross here? Uh, I, probably, I don't know what's going on. I'm going to throw away my mouse by this week. One second. Okay, another hundred odd pip drop coming up. Hold on, I'm getting a call. Uh, this pause recording. Resume recording. So looking at the dynamics of this asset at this present moment, uh, so we understand that we're expecting price to continue to fall. But we in this group, we have to use smart money concept, correct? We cannot operate like how other Forex traders would operate. We cannot stay in the realm of support and resistance. And we cannot stay in the realm of supply and demand because the market doesn't operate that way. Market works off of liquidity and the speed of which all the market can react to a specific level. A good example of this would be gold, but I'll get to that in a few. Quite honestly, can either make or break you. Now, let me explain the schematics on this one before we move on. Right around here, you could clearly identify a trap zone being set up earlier before we got a break of structure. Let me just pull back a little bit. I want you guys to see this neatly. We could see a trap zone being set up. All right. Pull, come across, come across, H1 chart. In this period, many investors were probably at that time fumbling, trying to wonder to themselves, will the price of EU shoot back up? Or will the price continue to fall? First and foremost, at the back of your head, you should remember the order flow. 
the other flow shows that you're in something that is bearish with previous monthly levels being respected and um, weekly lows being taken out. At the end of each trading day, a trader is supposed to do his daily um, review. And at the end of each trading week, you're supposed to do your weekly chart review in which you mark the highest and the lowest year the price went for the week and where current market price is in close proximity to. So let's take a look at how Monday kick started it. Monday kick started it quite naturally with a fear out and a trap and a subsequent stop on plus break. So it did all of that in one. If you look closely on the asset right around here, for those investors on Friday that, well, were trapped selling and those who were buying at the time, you can clearly see that he stop on them. Many traders have seen a market conditions like this, no matter what they might jump out, then just see the price now going away. Now, let's say you didn't jump out and you held on all the way till the Sunday, Monday period. You would have gotten, if you had bought, a small narrow window of opportunity to potentially capitalize on some profit. Small window of opportunity, roughly just three hours or so. Because then we saw the price starting to hedge back down. One thing I can say, whereas I understand what happened in this era, money was being put in, many traders consider this era as one big indecision, when in fact it wasn't. It cannot be indecision, and the order flow already dictates that the price is bearish. Quite naturally, with each subsequent strong drop, there's going to be exhaustion. The exhaustion is going to come in the form of investors collecting their money. So a couple of guys who the hell from prior, you know, they must say, you know, I want this to spike and stop me out. You know, I'm just, I take me out at break even. I'm just collect my profits while I'm there at the maximum. Uh, right here, so, would be a profit maximum collection point, especially if you had entered from here. Right here, so, if you did enter from a cell from right here, so, and you move your stop loss to break even, it definitely took you out. There are moves on the market that not only take out traders who have their stop loss in close proximity to their entry levels and so, but also moves that take out traders who have moved their stop loss to break even. So no matter what, whether you're in profit or not, whether your stop loss is close or far, you can go for your stop loss, even if your stop loss is in break even, because they know where the stop levels are. So you have to develop that psychology and that planning for knowing the time enough when to move your stop loss. And also the fact that if you're planning to hold a trade for a long period of time to get maximum profits, you can't move your stop loss to break even too quick. It will ruin that crucial entry that you got. And then once the market price then proceeds to push deeper in your favor, you start to say, sorry, my move my stop loss to break even so quickly. You get me? So a long-term far outlook is required on the asset, uh, especially for those who are going to be swing trading. Now take a look at this now. Price is at a discount quite naturally. Let's go on the M15 chart. And uh, we saw two tests. Now look at this carefully. I'm zooming fast. The market price of EU went, this is the low that it made, by the way, for Tuesday, market price opened up with the first candlestick and then every single investor that bought from the previous day, which would be Tuesday still for us, you went after them. Okay? Every single one of them. And right about now, those who sold thinking that the price was going to continue didn't pay any mind to the fact that the previous day's low wasn't taken out. So they sold at the low. This is why I often use this statement. You cannot look at the size of the candlesticks um, for determining if there's going to be a trend continuation. You can see a big solid bear candle go right down to a crucial support level. And you say, yeah, man, I sell now. It'll break it. And you just see that shoot right back up on you. So you have to see a true confirmation break for validate that, yes, it's continuing. So now, those who sold at the bottom and have their stop losses in this region and those who are sadly still selling, they are directly in line for the market maker to take them out. Because why? You know, so a couple stop losses up here, so, so I'm going to go for them stop losses there. 
So a decent look of pullback is what I'm expecting for the first couple hours, probably heading into London session and so on. And then we'll see. Now I'm looking for a look of buy off, you know, mind you. Yeah, this is at a high. So I'm using this as a confluence. So once this reaches a level in which I see that price literally taps out, no longer pushing higher, whatever economic news them want blame it on as to why they're going to weaken the dollar. And so you guys should be able to capitalize on that subsequent rise that the euro is expected to, to get. Today was really bad for the euro on two sides. One, we had a strong dollar. And two, we had a bearish EG. Whenever the euro GBP is bearish, that spells bad news for the European dollar. And that's literally right across the board, especially if a safe haven currency is strong at the moment. The euro really going to suffer. So, can repeat again, please? Whenever, um, yeah, we'll ask the question there. Okay. Whenever the euro GBP is bearish, that represents euro weakness. Okay, the EG is the currency pair that you analyze to gauge the strength of the euro and the pound. So in this case, the pound performed better than the euro today. And also in this case, it's represented euro weakness. So if the euro is weak and then you're trading the euro against a safe haven currency such as the dollar, the Swiss franc or the yen, and at that time, the CFA of currency is strong. Case in point, the dollar index was strong today. This is going to be the end result. Massive sell-off. Okay? And as you can see, it's been selling from Monday. So many traders who did their due diligence and analyzed what was happening. Matter of fact, for many traders, <laughs> they didn't even guess if the price was going back up come Sunday, Monday. They knew it was going to continue to sell. They did their far-term outlook. They saw that this was the high for um, Friday, all that type of thing. And the guys were like, come on, this, this is going to continue to fall. All them type of something there. So once you understand the confluences and the driving forces as to why your currency weak and then you pit it against a currency where strong, it's at that point, you know, I, I take your take money from the market, you know, because you're going to be on the right side of the market where there's a driving force that supports the depreciation of a specific currency. This is why some traders, you just see them trade EU straight because they catch on, yo, this is going down. But now I go fight something what literally I tell them by next week, I'm going to start um, sell again. It, it, it's free money. Now, what is important is where you enter. Let's touch upon that look a bit in this lesson session. You entered a, a cell um, here on the pullback. Market price respect the other levels. Them. Dollar strength come true. This is your reward. You entered um, a cell right here. So at the low, at the end of a decent sell-off, your money mash you up. It definitely mash you up. And while all of that are going, he's going to perform what I call psychological candlesticks. Now, psychological candlesticks come in the form of indecision. <laughs> well, to, to retail traders, indecision candles, in which you sit a farm, them big local fence, you just sitting stack up next to each other. And so, and it give off the appearance like, oh, it's going to shoot up, and then you're going to buy. One thing for it is just come right back down quickly. And then you see a big bull candle come and say, this. Not only was this a stop on candle, you know, this was a fake out, you know, even though it was on a daily time frame. Had you bought at that time, truly, honestly and truly, you made money. But don't just look at the size of the candlestick and the fact that it ended bearish. Where did the asset price in the whole grand scheme of the trend, where did it fail to take out? It failed to take out some key levels, you know, it failed to take out this other black right here, so, you know. So, you bought at the top and held on. You, you, you practically say, some stop, um, some stop last year, some stop last year, some stop last year. And then you say, all right, thanks. I'm going to continue my order flow. So, yes, people, first and foremost, sketch the order flow. That way you're on the right side of the market at that time. If you get the order flow incorrect, why well, you're going to get knocked. You're going to be selling when you should be buying, and you're going to be buying when you should be selling. 
So check the higher time frames. I know many of you have gotten so keen on the M5 and M15, but check back on the higher time frames. Them, they give yourself what I call a reminder of what you're actually inside of. That way, when the market does in fact correct, you end up crying like what reached enough people this um, since last week. Now let's take a look at the GBP JPY quickly. So the GBP JPY and the M15 chart has started a decent local bull run, right? We saw that the price having reached that high all the way up here, respected that high, price sold. Now price, we were discussing in our previous session, we were looking for it to go all the way down to 151. That didn't happen. So this local roof right around this region, we didn't see market price take out that zone. But as the price is going back up at this present moment, right? We're looking for an opportunity. God, this was a result of pound strength today. You, know? you get me? That's why the price went up. As the price is currently pushing up at this present moment, we're looking for an opportunity to see if upon going to this level, it's going to either A, break it and continue up, are we see a full mitigation step in, meaning that price fails to take out this level, then that would be a trigger to what? Catch a local sell, right? Now, the dynamics of this one is a bit tricky. I haven't done much um, analysis lesson on the yen. I'm not really the yen expert at a Tevan, but I do understand it. It's a safe haven currency, but what really drives it is manufacturing. So whenever the manufacturing, especially the car industry in Japan, get a hit, the yen really not really have much force um, going on for it, all right? But whenever manufacturing steps up, uh, importation, sorry, exportation, I should say, of them top selling brands and then steel and all uh, the things that come through. I ask them, Japan, uh, Japanese and uh, hit pan steroids. So for those of you who are not privy to this, what we actually use as a perfect gauge, given that the Bank of Japan as I think the third largest um, international reserve of USD in their um, home bank after China. Uh, we use the USD JPY to gauge the strength of the yen. So see me like how we use the EG for assist us in pound strength, pound weakness, euro strength, euro weakness. We use this. So as you can see, the end right now, I lose against the dollar. We see that we have a bullish USD JPY. So these are two safe haven currencies together, right? So once this starts to head back down, we can use this as a confluence right here, using the currency pairs on the chart. As a confluence, we say that there's building what? The end strength coming through. And as such, anything that is weak against the yen at that time. Let's say, for example, the EG was to go back bullish and then the UG was to go bearish, meaning that yen strength had come through. You would see the GBP, JPY suffer, right? But at the same time, you might not see the GBP, USD suffer. You might see the GBP, USD still push um, up. Because, not because one safe haven currency, now go on with nothing that doesn't mean say, the other safe haven currency, I go, you know, weak too. Them differ, different um, news, different economy, all in type of factors. There. But there are times when all three of them strong, you know, and this everything get wiped out. But later on, on that. So look at the dynamics now. A beer candle farming upon this, after this reach a high and come crashing down. And this, let's so show you how people do it. This reaching a low, I respect the low. This a line up for problem for the pound. Because if this shoots up, right, and then a safe haven currency got strengthened when this I give pound weakness, anybody who I buy GG at the time would have been in trouble. You get me? So at them type of confluence of people watch pan and chart when they might do the analysis and cross-examine and all the way and the pan chart. You know, I can time this, you know, and I can catch this at the top or catch that big beer candle the way I look for farm and all in type of things. And technical wise, you can see it a match up on the chart because right now, this I go up in our bullish mitigation here right now. It is. So quite naturally, we are going to expect some selling. What we want, we want people to buy it at the top, right? 
And when those guys buy it at the top and with the price of struggle for go higher, that's quite naturally our cue. <laughs> The, you know, catch up, look, sell off, and so on. One member in the group caught the sell right from the top. Right from the top. Was it but it, um, that he had some inside information? No, it was simple technical analysis. He saw the price going up. He saw that the price made the high. The high was respected. He saw this yen strain coming through. So he just hold on and in trade. And then he wall it, wall it, kept on wall it, and he saw, I'm at half at the pool box did in fuck occur, see? But notice, you know, people, this is a psychology of Forex. Each subsequent pullback, this is where you, you can get confidence to hold on for your trade. Some of them moves are quite naturally, those who move their stop loss to break even, it came to take them out. And it also at the same time wipe out those guys who impulsively kept on buying against what clearly was a downward um, order flow. And then price went, rise up, reached its target, respected the level. So that was respected. So the opposite of selling is what buying, buying take place. Now the question is, will it take out these zones to constitute that it's going all the way back up? Each step of the way, there's a confirmation. Every man and woman upon the chart have a certain key level as I often worry to say, all right, my office see this get broken for me say, all right, it's going to continue. Based on the markup me have by my chart, I can see say, all of the key levels that me have get taken out, everyone. Even though I never did GJ, me that focus on at the time I G U me that But come, coming back and seeing it, just reinforce a couple of things for me. Uh, so, all right. So I that me I try to bring cross to no. no USD card, same principle, similar principle. We use the oil to gauge the strength of the card. So oil prices, <laughs> well, I'm mean, not like, I don't know who else I feel it, but me, I feel it. <laughs> me, I feel it. The amount of money me spend on gas per week, it's not pretty, trust me. <laughs> when I add it up, oy. <laughs> so oil prices are going down, and I wouldn't mind it drop some more, but too bad we missed that historical buy off. Now, this Stevan did a lament last year. All of us missed the opportunity to buy oil when it was way down at $3 a barrel. Had we just bought it when the, the crash last year and held on, up till this very moment, we would be in profit. So, this is a point a reminder for everybody. At some point next year, some asset will crash. It has to happen because things are getting expensive. And wherever that low is made, once it recover, once it reach some historical lows, I say, man, people, buy up that. <laughs> buy up that. Gold was a good example of that. Soon touch on that shortly. And so, but this is what we use. So the Canadian dollar, no surprise right there. Not so strong right now. Oil prices are currently going down. Notice the correlation of the card when the oil price was going up or the card did a do it thing. So now that oil price is going down, we got weakness a step in. DXY was going up. We saw the transition period. I often call this a trap zone period in my terminology, so simplify it. You can use your own terminology, no problem. Right, so it was the era that many traders got confused. But for the technical traders them who have a keen eye, they would have kept their eye on the swing low that was made. And the fact that no matter how choppy it was, price actually, unbeknownst to many, started to show us a direction. As I'm keep telling you, go, go, go up on the line chart more often. <laughs> the line chart will show you the clean move that the candlestick madness now go show you. You could clearly see. I haven't seen much people trade the USD card in a good while. You could clearly see the market. I tell you, say, hey, man, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm, I'm going here. You see, before the big move come, there's always like a look of rev to it. Like a look of, you know, when you warm up the car and then first big move, people jump in because they must say, oh gosh, it'll take off. Market maker say, yeah, take you out. Then smart money traders sketch on. Yes, it never entered back into the region. It's going to shoot off back again and then buy. Next big move, retail traders say, geez, I'm going to miss the buy off. Buy at the top. Market maker say, thanks again. One more. Smart money traders say, yes, it will respect the previous um, breaks them. Buy again. <laughs> All in a cool way there. 
No, all that fine and dandy, you know. But supposing I remember so that I go on at the time. Memory I go help you in a forex. It on your back testing. <laughs> so if you forgot so that I go on, you're in trouble. That's what I say. There's a lot of information for take in, but if you take in the wrong information, you can constantly do foolishness. And so, so the price went up, not because uh well, I say no, uh well, well, but technically because of dollar strength, but but the main driving factor was the fact that oil prices began to slump. All right? And that's a USD card going back up right now. Respected yeah. the low. Oh, you have something for say, Chantal? No, I'm just going to say, I look for the um, crude oil now, and it actually falls. It, it has been falling from the last week, Wednesday. Mm. You see, what I'm right about now is, um, let me tell you, because we soon talk about the infrastructure bill we pass in America. But the price they get too high, you know. You see, in life, everything after a while, once prices reach a premium, and this may I try to get across to people, it's all about buying and selling. So the consumer, everyday thing. And I'm just, uh, this, people are looking at this and think so just America is affect. Everybody, this is affect. This is bad. This is not good for anybody. No matter which economy, especially a third world economy like Jamaica, oil prices are keep push up. Suppose they reach $100 a barrel. Man, <laughs> you are whistle down here when JP is done with you. <laughs> Remember, I tell you, because they have to put taxes because the increase, whole heap of things would have to factor in shipping, this. Um, you hear, so they have to lay off a couple, all type of something. So I'm glad to say it, I go back down. What I want to do, I want to just keep on drop. But here's the problem. Even though it's a, a drop, you're not going to see it reflect on the current pumps in your country. Because guess what? If you have your oil industry, your power company in your country, um, privatized, government can't touch it because monopoly, you still have to suffer. And that is the sad reality of us in Jamaica right now. So even if oil price was to drop, don't you look for no, no change upon the pumps. You're not going to see it reflect. In America, it's going to reflect, but come on. All right, enough politics. Goal. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll jump back on that in a Tuesday session, God willing. All right, so Goal did something today that possibly would have got many traders off guard. And quite honestly, it shouldn't. And it also did something that hasn't been done in quite some time. So Goal price for the first in a good while has actually taken out the previous day's low. So the load that was made on Monday was taken out. I know right here, so many traders got stop hunted. This was a nasty stop up move right around that region here. Yeah. Right around here. Let me just highlight it quickly. And so. And this is a trap zone thing about Forex, especially for an asset like gold. But one thing is sure, the technicals do match up. It didn't re-pierce back certain levels, not even up as so. Pricing went continued, run its course. Now, right around here, we see the low being respected. This is Monday's daily low, by the way. So we'll go back on the time frame. So now price has shoot up back a little bit now. Now, anybody know why it sell? Why it sell so hard, especially today? It's reach a mitigation here on the, on the daily chart. All right. Correct. Um, bullish mitigation era. More specifically, uh, other block, right? Who else? Yeah. Anybody else know why it's sold today? All right, so I got your Chantal alone now. Asset price was at a premium, right? Price was at a premium, and as such, they decided to send it back down. Nobody never did want to buy gold when it did at 1870. How much did it reach? I'm going to keep on the other chart. 1877, that's expensive. That's so, so. That plus on the technical side, man, I said, yo, send back that down, yeah, man. And if it comes to it that someone decides to look here, they want to buy it back from 1800, the bigger heads them, 
You can easily send it all the way back down to 1800. It not take nothing at all for that to happen. Nobody no want to place their money at the top of this. You get me? When down here, so it would have been the far better entry. So a couple of men, you know, then just look cross on the chart and decide, say, all right, there's a lot more to it, but I don't want to divulge that right now. Look here, man. If we're going to go 1900, cha, give me a bus here, man. I want to on that good. That's too high. Send it back down. Ah, so send it back down. Send it back down to what is called a sweet spot level. Come again? I didn't think say it's like a go up there. Like, I, I mean, we did have this in mind. So maybe it reached that area here and it sell. Mm. But then we wonder if maybe the it's like a short little sell and then it go back up to the, it goes straight up to the 19 countries. Because I guess we did have my, um, guess I did have it in my order. Mm. I watch out December, you know, peeps. Watch out December. You know, can I mark my word. Just watch out December. So the sweet spot on the chart would be 1834. That's now a key support level. All right? So you can send it right back down to this. So now what if 1834, just for speaking, see it get taken out? That's, that's going to continue tanking. Now what event would they blame it upon? For, for continue to send it down? Uh, CPI, um, GDP report, uh, NFP. Stop the ma blame it pan. If then decides to look here too expensive, more get it back cheaper. Uh, so think discount and premium. Which man in here, so or which lady in here, so would I go in a one store and they want to buy a shoes or a phone or whatever? And in a year say it itself is such a high amount. No, you're not gonna do that. You're gonna come back when you hear so there's a discount being offered a sale, right? So that's how it literally works on the chart. Certain price levels, nobody not going to invest at their eyes. Eh? And so a good example of this would be, I think, to some extent, the Dow Jones. But our next session, we touch base upon that. It's dangerous to see an asset, no matter what, in Forex, reach a high. And then you see evidence of price respecting a high that was made and struggling. The hint of this sell-off coming was becoming apparent from all the way back from the 10th of November, you know. You could have seen set that gear up for it, you know. Yeah. All of this was just extra, um, what I call it, extra buying, you know. And cause man to get trapped at the top. He just went touch the 1870, and he just sent it up to 1877, couple of man buy at the top card and things. And, and this is the danger of Forex. The we or some people, we just get caught up riding along one, one, one trend and that realizing, sure. You know, so the exhaustion has step in right now. Maybe I should just collect my buy and jump out because any of me have no orders up as a trouble, you know. And could it come in? No, Ed, enough man this wipe out today. Enough man. Enough. <laughs> I'm glad to say one member of the gold group can catch it from the top. So, Orlando, if you're there, congratulations. That was a brilliant entry. Brilliant entry. All right. So as your people, a smart money trading can really make you get better in a forex. And at the same time, that along with the state of your mind, because if your mind is there, I want to know what to do. I can testify to that. You're going to steal the foolishness. There's the, your psychology off up there when you trade. So if you now feel good and you go open up your charts, you do yourself a disservice. Like the market ain't going nowhere. Yeah? So if you head space and if you're not focused, you find yourself a jump. From one asset to another, and as the place a trade, say, ah, oh, feel like it there, you throw it, you're not ready. You're not ready, you're not calm, you're, you're not focused. Come I tell you, there's going to be times when the market moves in such a way that you can, if you know, if your headspace is not clear, you can cause you. Case in point, right there, cause of a doubt your analysis. And so, and when things like that happen, these are the areas where the market set up for, for disaster. Really set up traders for a pitfall. Eh? So I circle them quickly for you see. It's nice when the market do things like this, you know. Oh, yeah, some man of money I give away, you know. Money I give away. But be honest, so much time when you see the market do the thing, you know, that often. Unless it's a, a runaway trade, you, you see, <laughs> like, like the EU. Uh, so other than that, 90% of the time, 
beer linear market movement to Maduka. This is the money get put in. All right. So for the gold members, them, I'm going to try to drop a session tomorrow. I'm going to try to drop at least two sessions tomorrow for no. The gold group reached 93 members. I had to remove uh, one inactive member. I'm going to get that to 100 and potentially higher before the year done. So I have my work cut out for me. When you can help out with the promotions, them too, you know. <laughs> sure. Thanks so much for turning out, everyone. I hope this session enlightened many of you guys to trading. All right. Peace yes, out. Thank you. You're welcome. All right.